Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Wenton Knave. Uh, this week we are doing Fillmore East. Technically its title is Fillmore East June 1971. I haven't had this album for very long, only a couple of weeks, so you probably need to set that into account. But it's interesting how it's, it is it is a change of tack for Zappa. It, what was hinted at in Jungle's Revenge with Flo and Eddie, the vaudeville of it, well, that's, that's what people seem to call it, um, changes the music because it makes it much more vocally orientated. So it is different. At the time it got bad reviews. At the time it got really bad reviews, but I don't think that's really meaningful. I mean, Rolling Stone talked about it being a nadir. His arrogance was up as arrogance. Of course, I mean, it's Rolling Stone, isn't it? I mean, they don't know anything about anything. It has subsequently got, gone on to be considered a real classic. I've read an interview with a guy from Hawkwind recently, and he was saying it's what he's listening to at the moment, and it, it is a classic album. And he's right, it is a classic album. Yeah, I think it's slightly different to other Zappa works. Obviously, people can play it, it as if it's dumbed down or anything like that. And it, you know, there's, there's no Eric Dolphin on here. But it's certainly more sophisticated than the very early Mother's stuff. So, what does that matter? You know, uh, It's really interesting because at one point it was going to be a double album. I mean, there were a few different ideas going on at the time. That he did talk about doing a European album around this period. I might be wrong there. It could be slightly before or slightly after. This is only a single album, but the other side would have featured the epic... Billy the Mountain, which was released later, we'll talk about next week. But also the Encores, the Encore Jam with John Lennon and Yoko Ono. That wasn't included because of legal whatever, so obviously, as you can imagine, Lennon's people didn't move quite as fast as Zappa, and Zappa wanted this out in a couple of months. So we didn't get to hear that until much later with the other Flow and Eddie album, Playground Psychotics from the 90s. It's also on YouTube. So you can watch it on video. It's actually video, so that's great. It's like you noticed that John Lennon didn't credit everything, um, and he renamed uh, King Kong Jamrag, uh, which, was, which was a bit naughty. But Zappa and his revenge boy, when he re released his version of the jam, he called it An Eternity with Yoko Ono, which is accurate, given the, the vile wailing the woman was making. But quite funny, they put a bag on her head and all sorts of silly stuff, but it's worth watching the video of that. It's a concept album. What makes it interesting, it's a live concept album. It is a live concert, so it's not just a concept album played live. It's, it's his first live album, and it's a concept album. So there's familiar songs in there, but there's a story to it and, and everything, which is entertaining and brilliant. The vocals are brilliant at this point. Obviously, they're, they're harmonising. Flo and Eddie are harmonising full voice because they're really good singers. So it does dominate the sound. And, and the last couple of weeks, I've been listening to this and just another band back to back. And obviously, after a bit, the, the continuous sound of their voice dominates everything else. So that, that can get a bit, you can get fed up with that for a while. And it, obviously in retrospect, it's, it's easy to enjoy it now, but when it was current and that was the new album, uh, maybe you perceive it in a different light. So. Uh, the first song is Little House Used to Live In from Burnt Winnie Sandwich. This version isn't 20 minutes long. This one's only 4 minutes 41. And it's basically just, just establishing the, the, the Little House theme, really. But that's good. It's, good. it's a good way to start a live album. It's a good way to start a concert as well. The sound quality, you start to notice, the sound quality is not brilliant because of its time, but I think Zappa got better equipment shortly after this. But I think it, it wins on its, its charm. It's got a lot of charm. Track two, The Mud Shark, which is the fir first thing to feature Flo and Eddie's improvisational skills and the telling of a story. Um, if you want to know that story, read Hammer of the Gods, which is a biography of Led Zeppelin, but that, that part of the story is true, involving sharks and hotel rooms and fishing and stuff. And we've got What Kind of Girl Do You Think We Are? That's very Flo and Eddie. Flo and Eddie acting as the groupies. It's very, very funny stuff, very funny stuff. Buana Dick really <coughs> continues the same kind of thing they're doing. Um, and Latex Solar Beef as well. Then we've got Willie the Pimp Part 1 and 2. They have to be split up because they're over two sides, which would be too long to fit on. You only get a bit of the riff, actually. It comes on and you think, is this Willie the Pimp? Um, it's a jam, and it's, 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 it's the section of the, the concert where we get the guitar solos. So that's an important part of the album, but not the emphasis of the album. Uh, then we get Do You Like My New Car, which I know as the groupie routine. I think generally it's known as a groupie routine. I know it from You Can't Do That On Stage Anymore, Volume 1. It's very funny, and it, it tells the story of these groupies. They, they won't sleep with the band unless they've got a hit single. The hit single, the, the bullet, the hit single. They have to play the hit single. It's very funny. It's, it's really compelling stuff. I, I think it's brilliant. It really makes me smile and laugh out loud often. But then they go into the, 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 the Turtles Flownity hit single, Happy Together. It works so well as a denouement of the album. It, it, it's a great performance as well, and it really shows what great singers they are. Brilliant. And then we've got what are effectively the encores. It's still kind of part of the concept album, but these are the encores of the live performance. Lunch and Electric Turkey, actually an excerpt from uh, King Kong. Obviously there's not space in the album to fit the whole of King Kong, so we get a little cut of it. Uh, what's important is your special guest was Don Preston from the original Mothers, who subsequently rejoined the band. It's only 2 minutes 32 and it's some keyboard noodling. It's cool. 
Peaches, Peaches and Regalia. I'm surprised you didn't play it more often. This is Peaches 2, in a way. Peaches 3 appeared on Tinsel Town Rebellion. It's kind of a subdued version. It has a lot of charm, as I was saying, with the same quality, but the mix is a bit dodgy, sometimes the drums are a bit quiet and things like that. But it gives it a slightly different feel. It's like, it is the second version of Peaches. And um, ending with Tears Began to Fall, which is great. What can I say? Brilliant. Great old See you soon. Um, unfortunately, I should point out, I will not be doing 200 motels next week. Sorry to disappoint. 200 Motels is a big deal, it's a very important part of his catalogue. I don't own it, I haven't heard it. I'm waiting for the remaster, I will do it eventually. But not yet. See you next week.